Sylvain, Kansas. Stopped by the police and the Range Rover. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today, I don't even know what all we're doing, but I do know that we're gonna take the Range Rover and we are going to drive it about 120 miles. We put about 50 miles on it already. So, yeah, we should have almost 200 miles on it when we're done today. We got tadpoles and frogs have made a home in the pond here. Lots of tadpoles, so we're gonna be seeing lots of frogs here in the near future. Let's get out here. The Jaguar XJR is now gone. It is at Insurance Auto Auctions, and uh, it should be up for sale soon. Right now, you can't bid on it, but you can put it on your watch list, so I'll put a link uh, down below this video if you want to check that out. Put it on your watch list. I don't know exactly when they're going to have it going up for auction, but uh, ooh, there she is. There she is, there's my new baby. <laughs> no, I do not like it more than the Hellcat. No, I do not like it more than my truck. Uh, it is nice though, it is really nice. I really am enjoying it. I have ordered a couple things for it. Uh, I got some carbon fiber mirror caps because both, both of the mirror caps are missing and the engine cover is missing. I ordered the uh, proper engine cover for it as well. We're gonna drive this down to AAR headquarters. I've got a detail coming for it. It's gonna get fully detailed in and out. This thing should be looking super sharp when we're done with it. All right, so we're cruising down the road, man, and uh, everything is great. Take a look at the screen here. All right, we're cruising at just over 90, right? And do you, do you see the yellow light right there? Do you see the yellow light? Yeah, um, the money light came on, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're heading down to AR headquarters anyway, that's where the, uh, scan tool is gonna be at, so let's get down there, put it on the lift, let's check out underneath it, let's run a diagnostic on it, find out what's going on, and, and real quick, let me, let me reach out to somebody, see if I can get somebody to sponsor this video. Uh, so we can cover the repairs on this money light. So I made a quick phone call to my buddies at Ridge Wallet, and I said, man, the money light just came on on my Range Rover. You guys want to hook me up with a sponsorship? And they were happy to hook me up with a sponsorship and a free Ridge Wallet. Yeah, this is that carbon, man, that 3K weave. Yeah, this is free. One of you guys in this video is going to get it. In order to get this wallet, though, there's a couple things you got to do. Number one, you got to like the video. Number two, you gotta be a subscriber to the channel. I'm gonna check to make sure you're subscribed. And then number three, you gotta drop a comment below and I'm gonna pick a random comment and then uh, you'll have to give me your shipping information so I can get this out to you. It's brand new in the box, it's yours. So I wanna give a big shout out to Ridge Wallet. Why do I love this wallet? Man, because I've been using mine for, I've, I've had it for years now, guys. Right now I'm using this uh, 18 karat gold plated. This is a beautiful wallet. See this little cutout down here at the bottom? Real simple to use, man. You just push it, look, all your cards pop. I'm not gonna show you my driver's license, but holds up to 12 cards, and don't tell them, but I've had a tendency to put a few more than 12 in mine. You got the money band on mine on the back that keeps my, my cash in it. RFID blocking, they have over 30 different colors and styles to choose from. Lifetime warranty, 45 day, try it. If you don't like it, send it back. They guarantee you'll love it, or you get a full refund, 45 days. If you don't love it, send it back. You can't possibly lose on that. Plus the RFID blocking technology to prevent digital pickpocketers from stealing your information. Guys, over 40,000 five-star reviews can't be wrong. At least not as wrong as my Land Rover over there. We're gonna jump into that right now. Go check them out. Come to www.ridge.com slash AAR to get 10% off of your order Use code AAR, link down in the description below. All right, so we're having a little issue. I decided to save you guys a whole bunch of time and uh, go ahead and go through all of the codes on my own so we wouldn't have to sit here and go through them. Unfortunately, it's not working. Uh, I don't know if you notice this, but my very first codes come from the audio front control module. Now, most of these codes could very well be from a low battery. When, it, when we bought it, it said on the screen the battery was low. These, I can, I can reset all of them. Whatever comes back is actually problematic. Honestly, everything in this thing works, so I'm not too concerned with it. The problem that I'm having, we'll do a quick erase. This will wipe everything out real quick. The problem I'm having is I'm not getting any communication with the transmission control module, the ABS module, or 
The, uh, the engine control module, I'm getting no communication with any of them and I can't figure out why. If we go inside the, the truck here, another interesting thing is even though I can't communicate with those modules, uh, as you can see, my Altel is connected and it's communicating right now. Lights flashing, it's, it's doing its thing. All right, but you come over here and we'll push okay. What's missing? The check engine light. That went out on its own. I drove the car in here, and as soon as I started it up, the check engine light was gone. So what that tells me is that this is a uh, this is an intermittent code, which means it's probably not a big deal. It could be a catalyst starting to fall below efficiency. It could be an oxygen sensor starting to go. It's really hard to say. As you can see here, we've got no fault codes anymore. I've got it running. I know you should probably shut it off. I've got it running because I thought maybe if I started it up, uh, that would allow me access to the uh, transmission control module, ABS module, and all of that, and it didn't. Um, I will go ahead and power it back on, though. Okay, you can see the check engine light right there. And obviously, since I can't connect to the engine computer, I can't possibly clear the codes. So it wasn't me that cleared the code. Um, man, the hail damage on the hood is the worst. It is the worst of it. Thankfully, though, the design of this hood also takes up the top corner of the fender here. So if you just replace the hood with another one of the same color, this thing would have minimal damage. I mean, the rest of it's easy to pop out. The hood, I would say, is not worth popping out. You'd be better off just replacing. And up there, you don't see any hail damage. There's a couple small dings. But that's it. Sunroof works. Everything works. So as you can see, everything here is good. Um, we can exit again. And I'm going to go to control units. And I'm going to try powertrain control module. This is the one I wanted to access because I want to see what that history code was. And it says device is unable to communicate. Ensure the ignition is on, which it is. The cable's good. It is. As you can see, we can communicate with everything else. The battery is fully charged. Uh, the green light for the VCI is on. I don't know what the problem is. Now, I can't tell you what I did other than I direct hardwired my Altel Maxisys Elite into the J2534 uh, programmer down there, and we have access to the ECU, okay? North America. Hopefully, we'll get a historical code here. Oh, boy, we got a lot of historical codes. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Battery monitoring module, system too lean, idle air control system RPM higher than expected, misfire detected on startup, first 1000 revolutions, random misfire, cylinder seven, cylinder six, cylinder four, cylinder two, um, idle air control system RPM higher than expected. <laughs> okay. Okay, PO507, PO302, PO304, PO306, PO307, PO300, PO316, P0174B1, okay, and, and the rest of this. So here's what I'm gonna do. These are a lot of codes, and I can probably say some of the misfires might be related to, number one, this truck has been sitting for several months, okay? First startup in several months, it could not be running well. That It happens, it's been sitting, it had low battery power, and it's probably got ethanol fuel in it or had until we filled it up. I put premium in it. And as I said, now you can see all these codes. These are all historical though. None of these are, are current. Intermittent right here is too lean on bank two and the battery monitoring, monitoring module. So we're gonna clear all of these and it should be gone. All right, get rid of them. They're gone. Now, hopefully we can go over to the TCM as well and check for any codes on here. We have access to all this now. No trouble codes. That's good. That's really good. And then we'll go over to the ABS module. I don't have any ABS lights on, so I don't believe there's going to be an issue with any of that. We'll go ahead and check it anyway. We do. Lost communication with body control module. Internal control module software incompatibility. Invalid data received from ride level control and battery voltage. Boom. That's. I was hoping to see this somewhere in here. That battery voltage tells you everything you need to know, all right? These vehicles are super sensitive about voltage, very sensitive. So now that we've got all that out of there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, I'm going to do an auto scan. I'm going to let it run through all 
of the modules and we'll come back and see if we have any codes. I already see a few, great. All right, we're back. Are you ready for the slew of codes that came back? Only one, only one. The Digital Audio Controller Module C is the only code that came back and I don't, I don't even know what that is. The audio works fine, so I'm not gonna spend any time being concerned about it. The rest of the codes, as you can see, are gone. Now, why did we start having a slew of codes? Well, I came back and I had to erase them all. The reason was, when we didn't have this fitted quite properly, it was not accessing about 15 of the modules in the truck, including the engine control module and the transmission control module and the ABS module. It had no access to those, so those codes were still present from long ago. Now that we've cleared all that out, it's gone. I guess the next thing we need to do is get it up on the lift. We haven't been underneath it yet. We have no idea if it's actually leaking anything or not. So uh, I guess I guess I gotta get that car down. That's gonna be fun. Let's get that car down and then we can, uh, and then I guess, yeah. You know what, before we take the car down, why don't I show you guys what's under here? Some of you guys haven't seen the 55 in a while, so let's, uh, let's take a quick peek at her real quick. All right, under here, pretty clean, right? She's not leaking to drop anything. There's your flywheel, your clutch and pressure plate assembly. There's your Muncie, I don't know, an M20, M21 transmission. Hard to say, really. It's hard to say, but that is a Muncie right there. All right, looks pretty good. Everything under here looks really good. The only thing that I don't like under here is, and we're coming up to it, these mufflers. These mufflers are not loud enough. They don't do the car justice. We need to cut those off. We'll have to go to a performance muffler and see what they can do to help us make this thing a little bit louder. There is our Ford nine inch rear end. This is where our brake line used to be. It used to go from right there to right there. It's gone, which is actually perfect because it means we have no rear brakes. We don't want rear brakes. You can't do good burnouts if you got rear brakes. So there you go. There's the underside and here's, here's where things got hacked up. Yeah, that's kind of sad. There's your springs, your shackles, everything. She looks pretty good under here. Another thing I noticed, this used to have a drive shaft safety loop. That's interesting because you only need a drive shaft safety loop if uh, you're racing, right? You don't need those on the street. You should never really require one. The only time you really need a safety loop like that is uh, if you're on a track. Interesting. You know, I just spent $700 on this turd for a new windshield, which should be coming any day now. Brand new windshield, new gasket, and the carburetor on this. Let me see if I can show you guys this. It hasn't been wanting to run right lately. Like it really started acting up. And then I thought I smelled gasoline. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> well, come over here. I don't know how well y'all can see it, but she is leaking gasoline all over the place. I mean, everywhere, all out of these base gas, not the base gasket, but the gaskets right here, the gaskets up here, pouring fuel down onto the intake. So I found this same carburetor. It's a, uh, it's a 600 CFM. It's an uh, 08600 V is in Victor, S is in Sally. It was uh, $389 after tax, free shipping from a uh, summit. So should have a, uh, should have a new carburetor for this soon and a new windshield. And uh, we're working on some other things, don't worry. Ugh, I can't open the, the door. Ugh, there we go. And for those of you that like mail time, we're gonna do a mail time here in a minute. We got some stuff in from some subscribers, some people that enjoy the videos, and I wanna share that with you. So at the end of the video, we'll go through and do a, do kind of like a mail time thing. But first, let's see if she wants to uh, fire up here. There we go. Good girl, good girl. All right, let's get this out and let's get Big Bertha over there onto the lift. We say we take her around the block real quick. The old girl hasn't been out in a while. She's been locked up in her stable. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Boy, windshield will be very nice. And a fuel cell. I need to get a fuel cell too. 
I'll work on that. I keep forgetting. You know what? Actually, Santa said he's got my old fuel cell. He said he ain't gonna use it. So I ought to just get that back from him. And we'll, uh, we'll put that fuel cell in here. It really needs one. Boy, she winds up fast. Yes, sir. She really winds up fast. We're already running through second gear here. All right, let's get her parked. Let's get the big, the big uh, Land Rover yacht up on that lift. See what I mean? She died. As soon as I pulled in, she died. It'll start right back up. Yeah, and it, now it's running like crap. Hear it? Yeah. Yeah, she's, uh, she's not happy. Here we go. Ooh, yeah, you can smell it. She's running rich. Oh, man. The beautiful AAR headquarters house. I love this place, man. I really do. Roxy, hi, sweetheart. What are you doing? Oh, my dog is mad. My dog don't like you. Don't be scared. What's the matter, baby? What's the matter? Huh? You got some water? We probably need to get you some fresh water, huh? Yes, and we got some pizza in there if you're hungry. We'll get you some pizza and some fresh water. All right, guys, this is Roxy. She's a sweetheart. She's a big old dog. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Oh, you're excited now, huh? Okay, all right. Let's go, uh, let's go get her some water, and we'll get that thing on the lift. So, unfortunately, this is where my shop falls short, I guess you could say. That's about as high up as I can get it. I think you can see I'm I'm getting close to the rafters there, so I can't go any further than that. All right, let's dip under here and uh, let's see what we see. We're going to start with suspension. Since it's not up in the air, we're not going to be able to do the wiggle test, but you can take a look at everything and I can see the sway bar link is good. The axles are in great shape. Ball joints seem to be good. Tie rods look good too. The boots aren't ripped or torn. I don't see any rust. Looking at the... Uh, bushings here i don't see any real wear a little bit of cracking but uh nothing that would scare me away bushings look good let's go on to the other side here same thing bushings dust caps everything look good again no obvious damage we got our front differential right here and Everything here looks good. Not a leak. Nothing. I mean, axles are in great shape. Front diff looks to be in excellent shape as well. Rack and pinion. I mean, there's not a drop of anything leaking under here, guys. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing leaking at all. Next, we move back to the transmission. As you can see, the front drive shaft goes from the front diff. And it goes back here to the transfer case. All right, we're not going to even bother with that right now. Right now, we're just focusing on the transmission. Everything over here looks good, no leaks at all. Let's scoot back to the transfer case now. Now this transfer case is ridiculous. This thing is huge, like I'm not even kidding. This is a very unique transfer case. I've never seen one quite like it. There is your rear drive shaft right there, okay? Uh, the rest of this is the transfer case. It's got some kind of a weird mount right there okay and there you've got the drive shaft that goes forward into the front axle uh this whole unit right here was recently replaced i think in 2020 or 2021 it was only 6,000 miles ago i know that much from the uh, mileage on the paperwork i've got with it 6,000 miles ago this entire transfer case was replaced so i don't think there's any problems with that Let's move on back, see if there's anything else we can find. So sliding on back from the transfer case, we've got the exhaust and we've got the rear diff. There's the rear diff, don't worry, I got you covered with some extra light. Cha-ching! Okay, let's take a look at the uh, air shocks back here, suspension back here. Sorry for the flicker. Everything back here looks phenomenal. No leaks back here either, none. Wow, this is crazy, guys. And you go all the way out to the muffler right there. And that's the end of the, the tour. That's it. I don't see anything wrong. 
So how do I feel about this purchase so far? So far, I feel like this was a great purchase. Yes, the check engine light came on, and yes, it turned itself right back off, which tells me it's an intermittent problem. Yes, we've got a lot of previous codes, historical data saved from the battery being dead. And currently, this thing is, I, I don't wanna say it's fully sorted, and I shouldn't even say that. That's, I think it's a European thing. It's, it's not fully fixed, let's put it that way, for us Americans, right? It has one code, for some digital disc, DVD player or something, that's fine. As you guys know, with, with Jaguars, Mercedes, Lands Rover, all, all the Beamers, you don't want everything fixed, guys. You always need to have one thing broken. No matter how small it is, one thing needs to be broken. And it looks like we have that with this, and we're just gonna leave that the way it is. Now remember, I'm giving away this Ridge Wallet, okay? 3K Weave Carbon Fiber, Brand new in the box. I'm giving this away to one of you. But remember, you gotta like the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment below. And don't make it just a random comment like, hey, leave a real comment. Leave something that says, I want the wallet, or I'd like the wallet. Something like that, so I know that you're not just commenting to comment, that you're commenting because you actually want the wallet. Drop those comments right now. Remember, if you're not subscribed to the channel, you're not gonna be able to win. And we're back, it's a brand new day, and we decided to take the Range Rover out of state. Yeah, we're gonna put some serious miles on it today. I decided to do this just to show you guys that I'm not afraid of this thing, not one bit. We got the dog, I got the wife, we are loaded up, and we are on our way. We're gonna stop at a little place called, I think, Blue Stream Falls in uh i don't even remember where it is it's close to kansas so it's not too far from kansas i'm gonna stop there because i've never been there before i want to take her out there and uh, let the dog walk around and check it out too i'll bring you guys along with me but i had this uh craving for a mushroom swiss burger from a little place called spangles up in wichita so we're driving the Range Rover that we don't know much of anything about. We just got it a couple days ago. We're on the road taking it to Kansas to go get a burger. Take a look at the uh, at the display there. All right, cruise control is set to 80 miles an hour. We got just under half a tank of gas. I don't know how well you can see all this, but uh, it is kind of bright out. It is 99 degrees with a heat index of 106, and we've got 234 miles on this thing since we bought it. By the time this video is over, I think we're gonna have over 500 miles on this SUV. And I'm gonna show you guys, I trust this thing, I do. I, I've trusted enough to put my family in it. We got no backup plan and we are on our way to Kansas. Let's see if we make it to the first stop and we'll reconvene there. So we are almost to our destination, thankfully, because we've been riding around on this empty back road for what seems like forever. It had to be almost an hour. We've been on this road and there's nothing here. And the further we get in, the more I think, if something goes wrong, there is nobody to help us. There's nobody following us. We don't have a camera crew, all right? Uh, and if I call AAA, <laughs> it could be it could be four hours or four days before somebody gets here. Um, and on top of that, we're riding through some storm clouds here. It's starting to get a little stormy on us. And we're pretty low on gas too. Yeah, we're down to a quarter tank and I haven't seen any gas stations. This was well thought out, let me tell you. But I can tell you this, we have now driven this 312 miles. We have taken it up to 100 miles an hour. We've cruised regularly at 80 and 90, and there is no check engine light. That's the main thing I really wanted to test out. I wanted to really push it, and it's been a hot day today. 100 degrees all day, 106 is the heat index, and nothing, man, nothing. Not a single fault, not a single issue with this SUV thus far. Now, I shouldn't say that because we all know the minute you say that something's gonna break, I've got faith in it though, man. I wouldn't have uh, I wouldn't have done this if I didn't have faith in it. The, the best part is, we're not even done. Yeah, as soon as we get done here, we gotta continue on our way to Wichita. It sounds like a great idea. We'll meet you at Blue Stream Falls. All right, you couldn't, man, I'm telling you, <laughs> my luck, right? 
hot 100 degrees all day long. The minute we get to this place that we've been trying to get to, for months now, we've been meaning to come out here, and this is what happened. I mean, the road is washed out, it's pouring rain. Uh, you, you, honestly, you need one. <laughs> you need one of these to come out here right now. This is crazy. This is crazy. It's 79 degrees. 79 degrees, guys. It was 100 degrees just a few minutes ago. Now it's 79. Sounds like perfect tornado weather out here in Oklahoma. Oh, and 800 feet will arrive. Sounds like we made it. Ooh, pothole. Didn't even feel it. Didn't even feel it. Wow. Oh, man. Can we go off-road? No? There's a guy in a tent out there. Okay, well, we're here, and everybody looks like they're packing up. Everybody's everybody's right. getting out of here, man. Oh, they were swimming. People were out here swimming. Dang, that sucks. All right, well, we made it. Let's go check out the scenery. Take a look again down here. 79 degrees. It was 100 degrees. That is crazy. Well, it's pouring rain on us again, but we did make it out here. I figured we'll go ahead and show it to you guys. Uh, I've been trying to make it out here for months. The wind is picking up. It's really starting to pour again, which is great. I really thought this was over. Uh, welcome to Oklahoma, guys. Yep. Well, we're gonna be nice and wet by the time we get back to the car. This is a uh, Osage Indian Nation territory, and this is uh, Pawhuska, Oklahoma, where the uh, pioneer woman lives. Oh, it's pouring. Yeah. Anyway, um, hope you enjoyed the view. Let's get back to the car content and get out of here. Man, I'm telling you what. It was nice out here. It really was. What is that? Just a big old rock sticking out of the road. It was beautiful, and then almost as soon as we got here, the sky just dropped on us, man. Crazy. So we're going to head out to uh, Wichita right now. We hopefully find a gas station here soon because we're still lacking on fuel. But uh, as you can see, it's still storming, and the direction we're going to be going looks like it's going to get a whole lot worse. Man, the further we get into this video, it's like the further down the rabbit hole we go. This is starting to turn into a vlog, man. I don't know what's going on here. I'm glad we're in the Range Rover, though. I wouldn't want to be in my Hellcat or something out here. You know how Google Maps does, man. It's got us going down some county road, back road, middle of nowhere. Lots of these uh, wind farms out here. Windmill farms, whatever they call them rain coming and going storms are on and off and we are now at 343 miles and we are still out of gas well don't blink or you'll miss this town called shilder shidler something oklahoma i can honestly say i've never been here before but it looks like there used to be a gas station hold on where is my my gas tank is on the right hand side I guess we'll find out if they take credit cards here. <laughs> Hopefully they do. Yes, they do. We just made it to a gas station. Oh, man. Welcome to uh, Shidler, Oklahoma. Well, the only downside to this is this pump sounds like it's going to explode. And unfortunately it's ethanol and they don't have anything other than 87 and diesel so uh, I put just enough in here to make sure we can get to Wichita um, seven gallons I feel bad doing it I really do but uh, I'll make sure we burn as much of this out as we can before we get to Wichita and uh, at that point we'll fill up with premium let's get back on the road we got a lot more storms coming up ahead. It's actually a really nice, quiet little town. It's peaceful out here. Let's get back on the road. So in the beginning of the video, you probably saw that I got pulled over and I did. I got this, I got this little courtesy warning thing right here from the Mulvane Police Department. Uh, very friendly people. 
the officer was really cool because apparently I made a... That was weird. The radio just turned on. <laughs> Casper. Uh, I made a right turn on a red light on Rock Road in Mulvane, Kansas. And apparently there was a sign on top of the light that said no right turn on red. Now I checked for traffic. There wasn't any. I had no idea. And the officer came up and he said, you know why I stopped you? And I said, I don't have a clue. He said, anywhere else in the world, you could have made that right turn and been perfectly fine, but not here. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, oh no. He said, there is a sign that says no right turn on red. I didn't see the sign. My fault, I was willing to take the ticket for it. Uh, cool officer though, he did not give me a ticket. He just gave me a warning. So, uh, you know, we're good. So we're at 430 miles and we are now in, I don't know if this is Derby or Wichita, Kansas. Either way, we made it to the place I wanted to get a hamburger from. If you see that little exclamation mark there uh, over the supercharged logo, that is for low washer fluid. That's right, we're a little bit low on washer fluid and now I've got this stupid little triangle sitting there. Thankfully, we'll be able to get some gas. Now, let me show you where we are. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Kansas, they have this wonderful a little restaurant called Spangles. Man, if you've never been here, I'm telling you, it is worth the drive from Oklahoma here. And that's a good two and a half hour drive. Spangles, man, and they have cocktails. This must be something new. They didn't used to have cocktails, but there it is, Spangles. It's like an old school restaurant from the 50s. You know what I mean? It's, it's all dressed up with stuff from the 50s. You got Elvis Presley, Marilyn Monroe, and all that cool stuff. If there's not too many people in there that I'm gonna bother with recording, I'll take you inside we'll have a look but I am going to get my famous mushroom and Swiss burger meal oh it's so good right there half price steak burgers Monday night sourdough mushroom Swiss in fact I think I'm gonna get two of them well that's always nice I don't know what's going on there but uh oops I didn't do it man I didn't do it so here's the inside of Spangles man it's really retro love it. it's got booths that are kind of like car seats from the 50s you know This place is really cool, man. Look at that. Some of the old signage, lots of old magazines and pictures, and uh, even all the way to the bathrooms, man. Like, it just, it doesn't stop. If you've never been and you live anywhere near here, I'm telling you, it's worth the drive here. Obviously not sponsored. They don't know who I am. They're probably gonna start asking me why I'm out here recording. <laughs> <laughs> any minute but I figured I'd show this to you man this place is super cool they got them all over the Wichita area look at that super cool man love this place there's Elvis Presley over there all right let's get back on the road well it is a brand new day and uh, I want you guys to take one last look at her in an upcoming video I've got a on-the-spot mobile detail coming out to give her a full interior exterior detail uh, she should be pretty clean. We're going to go ahead and hop in here. I got to go do my Copart walk around. It is Monday for me. Let's see if we got any funny lights coming on. Low washer fluid. I know about that one. I'll take care of that in a minute. Put some washer fluid in it. She'll be happy. Yep, she's good to go. No more lights, man. No more lights. I had no issue. I drove it almost 600 miles. 587.2 miles what we drove this thing yesterday. And she's solid. She runs good. She drives smooth. I don't know what more you want from this thing. I said we're going to do a mail call type thing, though. So over here on the Hellcat... We got some stuff, man. We've got a, a BMW i3 that someone sent me along with this. Uh, no, it's not a Cuban cigar. This is a, a what do you call it? Like a, a perfume, a, a cologne type deal. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that's that's my Ridge stuff. Don't don't pay attention to this. Here we've got a an Alfa Romeo metal sign. I know you're like, oh my God, I can't believe you're putting that on the car. Uh, let's see. Yes, this is from Map of Eurasia. All right, Mario, thank you for the uh, sign. I appreciate that. This also, for some reason, I got two of those. 
And then we got a, a flag. Unfortunately, it doesn't say who it's from. It says, I hope you enjoy the flag. Keep up with the amazing content. Ryan from Canada. There we go, Ryan from Canada. We got a flag here. What do you think it is? Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and pop it open and have a quick look at it. Of course, it's a uh, the flag is going to be in a another package, right? So as soon as we get it out of that package, it's in another package. Let me open this up real quick. All right, man, you're playing with fire, sending me a Ferrari flag. All right, I'm not trying to go out and buy a Ferrari, but now that I got the flag, it's going to be tempting. Now I can't afford a Ferrari. Thank you very much for the flag, I appreciate it. I got a couple other flags I need to put up in my shop and I'll get that one put up at the same time. This right here came from Terrence, uh, Terrence Games TV on YouTube. All right, Terrence, T-E-R-A-N-C-E, -E, Games TV on YouTube. So thank you so much for the BMW i3 and the cologne by the way this stuff actually does smell pretty awesome let me open this up for you so you can see what it is when i got it i first at first i thought it was a cigar i was like oh okay i got sent a cigar look look at this tell me that i know you guys are just dying about the way i'm dropping stuff all over the hellcat right it's just a car man it looks just like a cigar don't it look at that it's not though like the, the lid pops off all right and it's cologne and i thought that was pretty cool Thank you, man. I appreciate all of you that send me stuff. And by the way, if you'd like to send me something, you can send it to Randy or AAR Auto Sales, LLC. And that's 502 East Ripley Street, R-I-P-L-E-Y Street, Byers, B-Y-A-R-S, Oklahoma, 74831. Hey, I appreciate getting stuff, and I'll throw it on a video and do a mail call. If you got a YouTube channel, leave me a little message in there. Tell me what your channel is. I'll be happy to shout you out in the video. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the ride. It was fun, man. It really was. I had a good time taking a car that I knew absolutely nothing about. And I'll tell you this, my fiance didn't want to do it. She did not trust the Range Rover nearly as much as I did. She's like, aren't these cars known to break down? I was like, no, babe, it's, it's, it's fine. Trust me. Um, she didn't entirely trust me, but we made it there and we made it back with no issue. It got pretty decent fuel economy for as big as it is. And remember, this is an all wheel drive vehicle on top of it. It's still not leaking a drop of anything. The engine still isn't knocking or tapping or clicking or clanking or anything like that. And it's got no more error codes like this is a solid vehicle. And I'm already getting blown up by people that want to buy it. It's important to remember, I don't sell to the public. I cannot sell to the public. So what I can do is if you have a dealership buddy, a friend, someone you know that owns or manages, runs a dealership and everything's cool with them, I can sell it to the dealership, but I cannot sell it to the public. Otherwise, this thing is gonna be headed to insurance auto auction soon. We're gonna come back with another video getting it detailed. We're gonna see what it looks like fully detailed and then it should be heading off to auction if we don't have a taker by then. Now, I know a lot of you want me to keep this or the best one. Give it to Jessica. Uh, I, I have to address this in every video of any decent car that I buy. Jessica doesn't want one of these cars. She has a Hellcat that she can drive all day, every day. And if she doesn't feel like driving the Hellcat, she can drive the Ram 2500. All right. She's got two vehicles. She can drive whatever she pleases. She would not be driving around in a Range Rover. Besides, a Range Rover isn't her taste. Like she's not, she's not into this, you know, like Mercedes, kind of like me, you know, neither one of us are into these. That's why I'm not keeping it for myself. I don't need a Range Rover. I don't need a Mercedes. Uh, they're nice. I enjoy driving them from time to time, but as far as like keeping one, it's just not me and it's not her. She has no interest in keeping the Range Rover and neither do I. We've got cars, we've got brand new cars that have warranties on them. It just, it just doesn't make any sense. So we're gonna send this down the road and as soon as we do, we'll have another video. We'll go over the cleaning and see how it looks and then I'll give you guys a direct link to insurance auto auctions where you can bid on it for yourself. With that, I'm going to get out of here. If you enjoyed today's running around, this was a, an adventure, hit the thumbs up button, man. I would truly appreciate it. Share the video with your friends. Show people, please, share the video and show people that Land Rovers, Range Rovers, Jaguars are not always problematic trouble cars that you got to be scared of, that you got to be afraid of. There's some good ones out there. You just 
gotta find them. Now, I got lucky on this one. I bought it sight unseen. I did not go look at it first. Big, big mistake, bad idea. Thankfully for me, it worked out. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Auto Auction Rebuilds. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon in the next one.